I am absolutely humbled to be speaking to all of you on this day during this important moment in your lives. Today, we celebrate all of you, the 100th class to graduate from the Wharton MBA program. Your achievement is such a wonderful Mother's Day gift for your supporters, who include so many moms, grandmothers, aunties, and all of the other loved ones who have mothered you. So let's take another moment to show them how much we absolutely appreciate their being here today and in spirit, always lifting you up. Now, I know that you all have heard many speeches that gave you tips on the future. And yes, I will give you some of those today as well. But what I really want to share with you first this afternoon is this. I learned everything I needed to know to be a CEO when I was young. From the earliest stages of childhood, the people who raised and loved me, and you were helping to shape the core components of our character, the essentials, the basics. And what I know today as a leader is that I rent my title. I own my character. So let's break that down. What does it mean to rent? And what does it mean to own? And what do I mean by character? The simplest definition of renting is when something is made available for your use in return for payment. There is usually an agreement that makes the terms clear. The thing that you rent is not yours forever. At some point, you have to give it back, like an apartment. It can even be taken from you if you don't meet the conditions of the agreement. Dean James introduced me as to Shonda Brown Duckett, President and CEO of TIAA. But yes, that amazing title is rented. It describes me, but it does not define me. Yes, I earned it, but I don't own it. To own something feels entirely different. When you own something, it belongs to you. You can claim it and proclaim it. It is forever yours. And when I think about the most precious thing I own, the thing that is mine, the thing that no one can take away from me, it is my character, and it was awakened in my childhood. You see, character, character is what defines you your attributes, your qualities, and the things that distinguish you as an, as an individual. You see, my character shows in the way that I live my life, the way that I lead, the way that I treat others, what I expect of myself. It is also giving myself and yourself grace. The thing about defining character is that it's messy too. It's not always perfect or your finest hour. There are moments of failure and your character shows in how you own your mess. You're building the muscle to handle it. My character is who I am. It drives my purpose, which I firmly believe is to inspire and make impact. It's my ownable asset. There are countless people in your life who have made it possible for you to be here. They have done their best, even when their best was not always sufficient. It was their best. So you are shaped by your experiences with them. When I think about my own journey as a high school student athlete, as a double major in marketing and finance at the University of Houston, working my way at Fannie Mae 
also earning my MBA from Baylor at the same time. No matter where I have been or who I'm with, the essence of who I am has always been inside me. One of the reasons I share my journey is that I want leaders who are early in their careers, like many of you, to see me and know that you can be your unapologetic, authentic self and become a Fortune 100 CEO. I want all of you to know that my journey would have been very different if not for a woman named Valerie Manning, an HR recruiter who had one intern position to fill at Fannie Mae. She found that intern and it wasn't me. But when she went back to Fannie Mae, for some reason, she advocated for me when I didn't even know what advocacy truly meant. And she said these life-changing words, but there's this other girl. I was the other girl she went out of her way to support. And that internship turned into a full-time offer right out of college. And from there to J.P. Morgan Chase and now TIAA. You see, that internship sparked a passion for helping everyone improve their financial security. A passion that I was able to not just discover, but to amplify because a woman chose to lean on her character and change my life forever. So you see, you two have all that you need to succeed inside of you, and you always have. You're also part of an amazing class, not just the century class, but as Dean James said, the first class in Wharton history to achieve gender parity. Wow. You know, I say publicly that I stand on the shoulders of giants. It was the cooks, the janitors, and the secretaries that introduced my race and my melanin and my gender to corporate America. It's also the shoulders that I stand by people named Otis and Rosie Brown, my parents, my grandmother, Naomi Levert, my daughter, Madison, my son, Miles, my daughter, Mackenzie, my bonus son, Brendan. Yes, the list goes on and on. There are fearless women who have inspired me like Shirley Chisholm, Sadie T.M. Alexander, Sheila Johnson, Marsha Fudge, Venus and Serena Williams, and all the unsung women that I get to meet every single day. And yes, all of you who are moments away from being Wharton alums, stand on the shoulders of some truly remarkable trailblazers. Roz Brewer of Boots Walgreens, the one other black woman CEO currently leading a Fortune 500 company. Sundar Pichai, who heads up Alphabet and Google. Alfred Liggins, the longtime leader of Urban One Empire. And John Scully, former CEO of both Pepsi and Apple. Now I'll stop there, but of course the list is even longer than that. And that includes so many people that are not household names. That may feel like quite a legacy to live up to. So give yourself grace. Some of you may not have been able to picture yourself standing here right now at this moment. Some of you couldn't even conceive this vision on your vision board. In those moments when you have self-doubt, when you experience those mental gymnastics of being the only in the room and wondering if you should share what you think, or the feelings of inadequacy when you want to put your hand up for a new role but worry that you don't check every qualification in the box. Don't waste time debating why your journey was so tough when someone else's seemed easy. As my father Otis Brown says, people see your glory, but they don't know your story. So make sure that you go for it fully. My father would also tell me to reach for the moon. And you're talking about a man who grew up in the segregated South, who did not attend college, who worked in a warehouse. He told me to reach for the moon because even if I missed, I would be among the stars. 
Today, I am among the stars. The vision. The vision for a man like Otis Brown, raising a daughter who is first generation full integration, had the audacity to dream with my mother, and here I stand. So the journey you are on is where your confidence lies. So remember the energy and the grit and the perseverance that got you to this day. You have also learned empathy for yourself and for others. Always, and I mean always, go back to the moments that shaped your character and come back to this moment today. You are enough. And you know what? You always were. You belong. And you know what? You always did. And your defining moment is not where you are right now. The real accomplishment isn't that you're graduating today at Wharton MBA, although let's be clear, this is a major brag, but the real accomplishment is your student journey here and how it accelerated the rich development of your character. So take a few moments to ask yourself, where does your ownership lie? What have you really learned? What have you understood? from the day you arrived and now from the day that you leave. How will you impact business? How will you impact others? You know, when you know more, you can do more. And you all know a lot more now. When you understand more, you can pivot easily and with agility and lean into your intellectual curiosity. Continue to let your intention be built on character and history will remember you kindly. My purpose is filled by my own ownable asset, my character. Character is what drives it all. As you re-enter the workplace, remember that you can commit to purpose and character in any job. That's what's going to get you up in the morning and keep you fired up to make impact and distinguish yourself. The lessons were culminating in you all along. It's character that will ensure that you, as Wharton alums, don't stop at being the first class to achieve gender parity. You'll go on to close other gaps because we have a lot more gaps to close in this country and around the world. Think about how you can influence corporate America to incorporate an expansive view that can truly position our country for growth, acceleration, and inclusive impact. 10%. 10% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. Let's work on gender parity there too. I am, I am one of only two black women CEOs leading a Fortune 500. And there have ever been only three full-time CEOs. So yes, there's a lot more good trouble to get into. And it starts with character. So, so as I prepare to leave you today, let me offer one last point. You have seen in business school that experience is your greatest teacher. But my hope is that you will remember to tap into it and deposit it back into yourself as part of growing and developing your character. The semester-long group projects helped you understand how to quickly optimize the energy you brought to the table. The late night studying tapped into your resilience. Collaborating in classes with people who are different from you provided you with experience making connections that balance your worldview and opinions about difference. The vigorous debates with classmates or professors helped you further develop the muscle to defend your thoughts. The question, the question as you go forth is how will this moment fuel your next level of character? Yes, there's levels to this. Your job titles will come and go and they are sure to be quite impressive as you advance in your own trajectory but they are rented. 
you don't own them. They will fall away and be passed on to someone else. But what will remain true is the story that is told about you. It's always going to come back to the difference you made, the lives you impacted, and the people you inspired. That's always going to be driven by your ownable asset, your character, the essence of who you are. So always know that you are enough and more than a conqueror. It is an absolute privilege to be speaking to you all today. Congratulations, Wharton MBA Class of 2023. Thank you.